we listen to the Bakers, we listen to the Steve Sullivan's of the world, Chad Robinson's of the world, what they perceive that they want is flour and we try to produce it for them. We do identity preserve, wheats, we, uh, we have our own farming base, which means we, pay, we buy from the same farmers every year. We look at the varietals and we check them for functionality, color, and flavor. Our flour is like grapes, and each grain has its own flavor, characteristic, and flavor and character. And the only reason we know that is because we were bakers before we were millers. These newer varieties of wheat, they bred out the color. They tried to make everything whiter. But in doing that, they bred out the flavor of the wheat. So these older varieties have more color, more flavor. You know, at the end, that gives the great artisan bakers, or the great bakers of the world, more of the flavor that they want. And it's, it's, it's pretty unique what we find out when we try everybody else's flowers. You know, 10 years ago, the, the, the whole grain products were whole grain, but they didn't taste good because I, I think that uh, the bakers uh, through the last 10 years I've really done a lot of R&D on whole grains, making them, making them taste different and well using pre-ferments. A lot of the artisan bakers have brought the whole grain breads up, their standards up quite high. And it, it could be cracked grains, we do nine grain cereals, uh, seed mixes, uh, cracked wheat, crushed wheat, bran. Sprout is a whole nother level. Sprout is like the top level of of, I think, of bread baking, and uh, Sprout is the most nutritious. It has a fermentation flavor already when you buy it from us, and you can make many, many different breads with it. And we can sprout wheat, rye, triticale, spelt. Um, you can sprout almost any kind of small grain. Sprouted grain is healthier because it changes it from a grain form to a plant, plant form. To a plant form. So once it goes through that sprouting process. If you read that book, did you read it? I haven't yet, I just got it. It'll, it, it'll tell you everything about it. But yeah, so it's, as it goes through that, it, it, it opens up the nutrients and so they're available to use. It, it reduces, it actually gets rid of the gluten when it sprouts that way. And then it, but it also, it, um, it changes it. So the glycemic response is very low on a sprouted bread. As you compared, digest it a lot better too. Yeah, it's digestively, you know, you know. Like a difference between a sourdough bread that's lo that takes two days to make, like in my bakery, yeah. compared to one that's made with yeast in two and a half hours, right. you'll get sick off that one. But the sourdough bread, because it's it's long fermentation, it's slow food. Uh, well, Pascal Rigo, I met, I met probably 16 years ago, and. I was working for another company at that time, and I met him. I started selling him baking ingredients, and over the years, um, I went and he taught me how to bake some some bread. So I learned some of my baking skills from him. And then, um, as we grew, uh, we partnered up on one mill at one time. He was a part well, owner. When we when we bought Central Milling, is Pascal was a part owner in Central Milling. We owned a percentage of uh, the original the La, La Blanche. Yeah, the Bay Bread, his company, and he owned part of the, the mill. Okay. And then we eventually ended up kind of buying each other out, separating that part, but we continued to do business together. Yeah. Pascal really, um, I would he would tell me what kind of flour he had like, you know, trying to duplicate the ones in France. And at that time, I really didn't know a lot about flour, but I, I listened to him and then uh, we would grind some flowers and say, yeah, you're getting closer and closer, and then we just kept trying. And then I started doing um, wheat varietals and lab analysis to match the flowers he was talking about. And that's how we became yeah. to notice what varietals did want. It gets really complicated because yeah, a lot it's, of different it's, varieties. It's the with Pascal that started really getting us into the varietals yeah. of wheat. Yeah. So he wanted, one is he wanted to have a yellower color like it did in France, his, his, his bread in France. He's like, and so we found a variety of wheat that had that yellow yeah. color to it. And then, and then I met a man named Steve Sullivan from Acme Bread. You know, Steve. You know, Acme Bread. He well, he brought artisan bread to the West Coast. I mean, he started the bread revolution in 1987 in Berkeley with Chez Panisse. And so, when when I was working for the flour milling company, they came. We kind of worked together on 
grinding, he wanted a certain thing out of his flour. He wanted to know where uh, the wheat came from, uh, what kind of wheat it was, can we give it to him consistently? He wanted this kind of milling on it. And in the beginning, we, we were listening to him, we really didn't understand. But by working hand in hand with them, we became a really good miller because we worked hand in hand, they would listen to us, we would listen to them, and we shared, we shared information back and forth where it made sense for the miller and the baker. And then we could take what we learned from him and transfer that back to the farmer to go, hey, we don't like that variety of wheat, we like that one that you grew the year before. Or So we're constantly testing the wheats for flavor, color, and all that. And it's, a, it's an ongoing thing every, every year. This way, oh, organics. Think he won? Did he win? Yeah! My nephew just won the freaking raisin bread contest. Yeah! That's big. I taught him how to bake too. <laughs> we're here, we're here to keep milling, baking in the least processed way, bringing back the art of, of actually bringing the farm to fork. We want the farmers, we want to put a face back on the farmer. We want our customers to know who our farmers are. We want to know where the wheat's coming from, what you're eating. We keep coming up with new products like the sprouted grain breads, um, mixes. We listen to our customers. We, uh, we're getting into the wheat-free, gluten-free um, blending and packaging business. And basically, I think I was put on earth to teach people to make good bread and hopefully they carry it on. Um, but we want it healthier. Healthier. You know, organic, sustainable, sustainable because they're not making any more farmers, they're not making any more land, so we got to keep what we got.